Welcome to Earth Juice. Coming up this week, koalas with chlamydia, killer teams of fish, wolves back from the brink, and mosquitoes now even more deadly. Recent studies have shown that the poster animal of Australia, the koala, is sadly in decline. And as I found out on a recent trip to San Diego Zoo, the reason for this is a variation on a very human disease, chlamydia. So Jeff, can you tell me how tagging koalas is helping to combat the spread of this disease? So we have uh, about 21 koalas out on an island in Australia that are all got little radio collars mm -hmm. on them. And in those collars are GPS loggers. So we'll be able to tell exactly where they've been. The other cool thing is that they have proximity loggers. And so when two koalas come together and they're within one meter of each other, those collars talk to each other right. and they record who the other koala is and how much time they spend. We've uh, done health assessments when we put the collars on. So we looked for uh, diseases like chlamydia, which is a big one in koalas and, and does affect reproductive success. We'll be able to actually determine when chlamydia may have been passed to another koala because once we have that collar information, we'll know who spent time with who <laughs> and when. And who the guilty culprit is. Exactly. <laughs> and then also we'll be able to tell from reproductive successes, you know, which koalas are managing to breed and things like that. And of course, maybe the most satisfying thing is that all the work you do here at San Diego can reflect out to other zoos around the world and even to, to koalas in the wild and help them. Yeah, it's one of the great things about working here is we have the resources to really do some great work. And then the other work that the zoo's doing actually back in Australia, hopefully long term that'll really help uh, uh, the species out, help the species survive in Australia. A new study has shown that some species of fish are collaborating with other marine creatures to flush out prey. Scientists from the University of Cambridge in the UK and the University of Neuchâtel in Switzerland revealed that some coral trout and groupers like to team up with other predators to catch their prey. While the groupers prefer the company of Napoleon wrasse and giant moray eels, the coral trout prefer their accomplices with eight arms, the octopus. Scientists revealed that each aquatic assassin has its own strength. The coral trout and groupers are fast swimmers and dart after the prey, maneuvering themselves into a headstand position to point out where it is. Once they know, the octopus and giant moray eels can then squeeze themselves into small gaps after the prey, whereas the wrasse can crunch through the hard coral with its jaws. Once the prey is out in the open, the marine mates work on an every fish for themselves basis, but the researchers recorded that these partnerships result in a significantly better success rate than an individual attempt. The US federal authorities have announced that they plan to remove all protection for grey wolves in the lower 48 states of America. Hunted to the brink of extinction, wolves were reintroduced to the West 18 years ago with huge success. However, their presence has always been contentious, and with livestock owners in particular arguing that their numbers need to be controlled. So while this is perhaps good news for them, scientists have explained that the wolf is far from completely safe and that the species has only just begun to recover in Northern California and the Pacific Northwest. While some scientists agree with the decision to delist wolves, others dispute that defining wolf subspecies warrants further consideration. However, the Fish and Wildlife Service is expected to announce its decision to delist the wolves in the next few weeks. And finally, responsible for more deaths worldwide than any other creature, the mosquito has just become even more deadly. Scientists have revealed in the journal Nature Genetics that while it has been known for several years that Plasmodium falciparum, a parasite transmitted by infected mosquitoes, showed small signs of resistance to some anti-malarial drugs, that resistance is now on the rise. Analyzing 825 parasite samples from across Southeast Asia and West Africa, the researchers found a set of unique populations in Western Cambodia that appeared to be genetically different from one another. Within each of these subspecies, inbreeding is rife, and this appears to be leading to a higher resistance to some anti-malarial drugs. The team added that the threat is massive, as with the annual death toll from malaria standing at 660,000 people, understanding how this parasite spreads and the cause of its resistance is crucial in saving lives in the future. That's this week's Earth Juice. Subscribe to make sure you don't miss any new videos on Earth Unplugged, and I'll see you next time.